All right, thank you. Uh, 816, let's uh, keep it in the Zoom room where we're going to bring on the uh, Labor Director, Dave De La Sola. Dave, uh, thanks for joining us this morning at 816. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? All right, how are you? We're probably doing a little better than you guys over there. Yeah, never <laughs> a dull moment over here. But, uh, <laughs> I am- I enjoy your professional communications behind the scenes as you move and uh, log in for our show. <laughs> well, if, if, if any video ever leaks, we know who was recording. Cause... <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Bree. Yeah, if you could, yeah, I... just bring us up to speed with uh, the latest with pool payments. Yeah, well, um, you know, woke up to my only day off on Sunday to the news of Trump's uh, yeah package that's being released so i've been kind of reviewing that and looking through it um i don't think it's going to have a lot uh with us because uh number one it's a complicated program it's a totally different program all new uh it has to be written up and put together with a, a budget and allocated to us and it'll run separately so it could take months to put together mm. and once put together, I don't think it's going to last more than a month before the money runs out. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but you know, it is what it is. And if it moves forward and doesn't get challenged mm-hmm. or, um, what I think is the smartest part of this move is that it may be able to force Congress to, uh, go back and try to pass something that to over, uh, overrule this, uh, uh, EO. So, you know, whatever happens, we will, we will prepare and we will uh, start crunching the numbers. I'll be waiting for guidance from USDOL as they look at the package for, you know, $400 uh, dollars a month with uh, 300 from the feds and a $100 match. And um, it's, you know, it's, there's only $44 billion set aside in uh, disaster relief, which, you know, is taking money away from that program in case there's any hurricanes or typhoons or or disasters but you know um it's not going to go very far when the whole nation is going to be asking for a piece of that pie Mm -hmm. but uh i'm sure they'll carve off hopefully a small piece for that if it moves forward for guam and then we'll have to review to see how much you know is our match going to be once we get those dollar figures i don't know if i can program that into my pool program because it's a separate uh, program. It's not a unemployment program. So uh, that's the fear that I've always, uh, you know, was worried about is that Congress or Washington was gonna pass a totally new program that we're gonna have to basically put together and uh, instead of just something that melts into the pool program. But, you know, it is what we got and uh, at least it's something and uh, we'll move forward. It'll take uh, a while before we get some guidance and some information mm-hmm. on how to move forward with this uh, package. So that's and, kind of uh, your interpretation, uh, Dave, that we would have to stand up a whole separate uh, unemployment uh, program? Well, this is not an unemployment program. This is a disaster relief program. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know whether, I don't know whether we can melt a separate program into this. Right. Uh, uh, because it, they're not, you know, it's apples and oranges, mm-hmm. even though they run similarities. That's against something that we have to get guidance on because it was the unemployment PUA emergency dollars that paid for this program, for this program, and not a relief program. And whether or not it can be meshed in together, I don't know. It's okay. something that is, it has to be discussed, but it is something that, you know, you have to put into the mix to, to figure out is it, if it can or not. Those are certainly the types of questions that I'll be asking mm-hmm. when USDOL is uh, ready to uh, receive questions and how to implement this and put together the guidances. Mm-hmm. So it's a disaster relief program, but targeted to pay $400 for the unemployed with, yes. a, with Guam uh, and all state governments uh, picking up at least 25% of the tab. Yeah. What what would yes, our what wow. would our share of that be, Dave? Is it sixty million? I heard something like sixty million. Well, you know, it's sixty million uh, if it's going to run for the total length of the program. Uh, but uh, as I uh, see it, with forty four billion, 
<clears throat> we'll be lucky to get one to two months. So um, <clears throat> uh, we would probably wait until we get a budget because when you get 44 billion, it's gotta be carved out with all the states and territories. So when they carve it out, if however they decide to, to work it, then we would know how much of that dollar amount is com coming to Guam. And then we would be able to really figure out how much uh, is our, our piece that we'd have to fund. But, you know, it's going to be kind of a free for all. The governor will, uh, of course, have to apply for the FEMA disaster to Homeland Security and uh, something that we've had a lot of experience doing in past disasters. So, uh, and unlike with the, the pandemic, we applied for a disaster, a DUA. So it, it'll be handled in a similar way and moving forward. As far as we can see, like I said, this is a, a totally new program mm -hmm. and we'll uh, wait for guidances as the governor said and, and, and see what, you know, what happens with this because it could get challenged in the courts. It could move forward. It could be a lot of variables. So, um, uh, and it's only a day old. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be looking forward to seeing what happens and develops out of this. At least it, it gives something for us to uh, work on while we, we continue with the, with the PUA. Um, I, I, I do want to tell you that we uh, got our, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I wouldn't say approval, but they went ahead and they're moving forward with another $185 million for the second allotment. And we're hoping to get that any day now so that uh, we can continue with the, the, the claims and the process. So uh, uh, that was good news that I got over the weekend. 180 million? I'm sorry, did you say 185? 185, 185. wow. Wow. Well. So, so uh, we'll be, uh, and so we put out about 270 million, give or take a couple million here and there, uh, already out in the economy. And I look forward to getting out that 185 in the next coming weeks to months. And uh, we'll see how quickly I can get that out and keep moving forward and uh, keep trying to uh, fight against all this fraud that's coming in. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think we're doing a pretty good job. And uh, we'll just keep mm -hmm. moving forward with that program and we'll plan and see what happens with the second program. Mm -hmm. Well, since the word uh, got out that the FBI has been helping uh, investigate these fraud uh, claims that are being filed, have you seen a, a reduction in uh, fraud claims that are, are being filed with uh, DOL? Uh, I wouldn't say I've seen a reduction. I have seen a lot of people calling up and uh, reporting voluntarily saying that they forgot income or, or they needed to make changes. Huh which I encourage. <laughs> so uh, that's creating a lot of work for us. But, it, you know, I, I welcome that kind of work to correct people's claims and make sure that it is, uh, you know, clean and well so that, you know, future audits mm -hmm. by the OIG uh, they will see that we ran a pretty good program. Mm -hmm. well, well, speaking of uh, underreporting oversight errors, with what have you, what about with the uh, GDOL uh, staff and, and employees? Uh, how many claims would you say or how much money has been paid out by GDOL uh, and, and realizing um, later on that, okay, we shouldn't have paid it out. It was, it was a, a fraudulent claim. Uh, that's not something that we've been able to track. We've been so busy trying to clean and try to pay and try to take care of problems that uh, we've done our due diligence in the front end instead of trying to look at the back end. Uh, it would take too much time and resources. You know, like I said, uh, we've identified some additional fraud measures that we want to implement uh, and for this next batch, and we feel pretty strongly that those those types of uh, measures catch a majority of the fraud. You're never going to catch it all. And, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we, we, I'm trying to find a good balance between, uh, you know, paying out as quickly as possible and catching them in the front end. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have to circle around when uh, we get some breathing room. And that's why I'm trying to tell everybody, it, you know, you think you may get away with it now, but, you know, when we circle around, or the OIG circles around, they'll they may catch up to you in the back end, and then you're going to have my God, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars to pay back. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, but, but you can you confirm that there have been some fraudulent claims that were paid out. Say that again. But you can confirm that there were some fraudulent claims that have been paid out. That um, yes, I think I'm not going to be so naive to think that we've been perfect. Mm -hmm. There's claims, and and there's been claims that we've caught, and there are claims that uh, and some of these are are technically fraud. Some of them could just be they forgot to add a second job in there as income, right? Or they mm -hmm. uh, or you know, or as honest as they got PPP payments. Uh, back a couple months ago when they already got paid and they have to go back and make those adjustments. Dave, who so determines the um, it, when somebody files, right? So let's just devil's advocate here. If I file, then I'm reading in KUM, I'm watching on the link, all this fraud, like, oh my God. I mean, who determines my intent when I call you guys? Of course, I'm going to be like, yeah, man, I forgot to list that whole other job. My, my bad. Can I change that? I mean, up to what point do people have to change their applications and who's the arbiter of uh, determining what their intent was, whether uh, it was really an honest mistake or, I mean, cause I'm, I'm just worried. Are we, are, are people going to get away with it now that they know they can call and change stuff or, or does it stop when they get paid up to what point do they have to, to kind well, of you know, talk to I, you guys? I, I encourage people to call hmm. and, and fix their claims. Uh, most of them have been, you know, minor little things here and there and you know my whole outlook is that i'm really trying to get the assistance and the money out to the public i want to get the money to the people of guam and uh i know that the system is very complicated and difficult to uh manage and it it doesn't work very easily when you want to go back and make changes so instead of me you know spending time to see whether you were you know what your intent is call up let us fix you and get it corrected and 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 move forward then for me to have to find out and catch you and then it's a whole new different story so uh you know my intent is to help and to get the money out and to get as many claims so that we can put this uh, money back into the economy and keep people moving forward and uh if i see malicious intent you know we definitely uh have uh, 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 mechanisms in place to start moving those forward. And we have seen them and we are moving forward with some, and it's not like they're getting away with it because mm. the fraud hotline is has been um, working very well. And these people that have, uh, have been reporting to us, um, you know, they've uh, been hit and they've, they've have to uh, come up with overpayments and they're gonna have to pay it back and, you know, that's what I'm trying to avoid as right. much as possible is, if, you know, in the front end, trying to catch this before you get caught and then you've already been paid. And now you have to come back and pay us back because uh, this is, when I say us, the federal government, mm -hmm. this is all federal funds, federal program, federal rules. I'm just the messenger. Mm -hmm. and we just try to uh, run it. So a lot of people, you know, are claiming that, you know, why am I making the decision? Why am I, you know, you know, not uh, approving their monies. It, it's not me. It's the rules that I have to live by, and uh, um, and and that's so. That's what you know. I have to uh, you know run, mm -hmm. and I don't have any deciding factor. Okay. Zero. Okay. What, what's the final number uh, for today, at least, on how many people have filed claims? Well, we're the, the, uh, we should be around twenty eight to thirty thousand, but the. As far as the initial claims put in, uh, we have about, I think it was over 35,000. Uh, I'm sorry. It's, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't get an update on that uh, okay. this morning. So uh, I'll uh, have to forward that to you later. Okay. Uh, David, then on, on the payments that are uh, being released, up to what date are those uh, filed? Uh, we're on uh, July 8th, and that should be hitting the banks uh, today, tomorrow. Uh, uh, it was processed uh, on Thursday, and uh, we have requested the drawdown. I'll find out uh, this morning when I, uh, uh, you know, get to work uh, whether or not the um, the draw, you know, the drawdown hit the bank. Because as soon as it hits the bank, then we uh, DOA forwards that to uh, for payment. 
So it should be happening today. David, just a, a couple of last questions. Um, you were able to take care of the lady that uh, had called the show uh, last week. I gave you her contact uh, info. I take care of everybody that you give me. Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And then um, lastly. I take care. I read the papers. I read the news. Right. I read everything. When I hear these people, uh, you know, complaining or are not happy, I check them out and I say about, 50% of what I read are actually uh, true and correct. The other ones are, are either been disqualified and they're complaining because they're thinking that they're going to bully us into getting them money when they've actually been fired or released from work mm -hmm. and they, they don't qualify. But, you know, it's, it's something that I, uh, I'm very passionate about getting people money. And uh, it's funny because uh, I, you know, as a young man, I would love we, when I go to the restaurants, we were laughing and, and I walking out, I got all these young ladies handing me pieces of paper with their names and their phone numbers. And uh, I always wish that, you know, during one of my younger days, but now they're all cool of people <laughs> trying to ask for that. Not quite uh, what I dreamt diggers. about, but you know, I'll take it <laughs> what I can get. Dave, last question, man. The, the people with the emails and the phones are just uh, complaining that they're not getting a, a response. Is, is there another way or what's the issue with that? Because that's something that we've been we talking about. We are, you'd be surprised. We are answering. We are responding. We are getting there. We, you know, uh, I, I, I'm not going to say we're perfect, but we are spending all our time answering and going after those emails and we we take care of hundreds a day and uh we just keep moving forward and they are being answered and they are i mean look at the monies that we've given out so uh are there still people that need help yes but uh as i stated in the, the latest press release if you have a problem go to jotnia library or agate library okay we're taking walk-ins and if it's too crowded for that, we'll give you a time in a very, you know, a time and an appointment for you to come back and we'll handle your claim and we'll fix it and get you, uh, uh, you know, in the system. So that's something that's new. And so if you go to Jotnia or Agate, you can walk in with your problem and we will take care of you either there on the spot or give you an appointment to see you right away. Thanks, so, Dave. Uh, I encourage all everybody that has a problem to go do that route. All right. Thank, thank you, Dave. Thank you. Wash Chris, your hands. Thank you, Sabrina. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Take that. care. Uh, we will take a short, really short break and uh, get uh, Mrs. Marie Gutierrez, the Board Ed of Education uh, Chair, on the link next, right here on The Breeze 93.9. We're celebrating GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience.